Steelers, but I didn't want to say anything because the Steelers 11 and 0. So then I look stupid. I look like the guy saying, how can you be worried about a team that's undefeated? It's like saying the one girl who everybody finds universally attractive. You're like, no, she's, she's just not that cute to me. Mm. Like, that's how I felt about the Steelers. Like, mm. no, they're, they're just not that good to me. Mm. But now that they got this loss, I'm going to keep it a buck with you. Yes, I'm worried about the Steelers because the Steelers have been kind of an imposter all season. What do I mean by that? They have an incredible defense, an incredible defense. But the greatest coaches that have coached the game that are still living have recently said, hey, it's an offensive league now. Let's talk about Nick Saban in college who recently said, hey, defense is cool. But really, you need a firepower offense to win. So that's what I mean when I say the Steelers are an imposter. They're an imposter because their formula for winning, which is defensive, as a former linebacker in the NFL, I love. But that no longer works to always truly win. You got to be able to go on offense. So what do the Steelers do on offense? They only have 44 plays this season plus 20 yards. Put that in perspective. The Chiefs have 59 plays this season, 20 yards or more. Chiefs are number one. Steelers are number 19 in that category. So, yes, your defense being baller and being stout, that will do you good. But will it really really do you good? Can we look at some of the quarterbacks that these Steelers have played this season mm. so I can let y'all know exactly why I've been mm. worried about them? Mm. You know, you'll see some names on there like Drew Locke and Jeff Driscoll, mm. Carson Wentz, Garrett Gilbert. Joe Burrow, rookie, Jake Lutton, RG3, and Trace McSorley. So on their road to being 11-0, which is how they started the season, look at them quarterbacks. They weren't even facing the best of some of those teams' quarterbacks. They caught some breaks. You can only beat the teams on your schedule. I get that. But I've been worried about these Steelers, and now my worry is justified. Mm, interesting right there. Uh, I knew you were lying all along as soon as you started to talk because your first sentence was, <laughs> let me keep it real with y'all. What do you do all the other takes? What do you do all the if other times? If they say real talk, I probably don't trust you. you probably I won't trust you. Can't that. trust that take right there. So Steelers are not <laughs> imposters. I am not worried about the Pittsburgh Steelers. You know why they're not imposters? Because no one said that they were perfect except their record before last night. They had a perfect record, but do you think they were a perfect team? Absolutely not. I even give you some ammunition right now, Acho. This team is leading the NFL in drops. Deontay Johnson, stop dropping the damn ball. Boy, got skills out there, but you continue to drop the football, leading the league in drops. We saw it again last night. We saw them drop seven passes against the Ravens. They dropped five passes, making Tomlin have to go out there and say, you got to make the routine plays routinely because that affects the entire group. That affects the flow. And now you find yourself in a position where all of a sudden you blow a 14-point lead. The Pittsburgh Steelers blowing a 14-point lead, second largest lead in home franchise history that they've blown. Ben Roethlisberger is 109-2-1 in situations where he has a 14-point lead. So that was an anomaly last night in terms of them losing it. But let's talk about why this is a good team, elite team, contending team. If you look at them simply, this is a team that had a perfect record up to week 13 in conference play. Six other teams have done that in NFL history. Huh. Four of those teams went to the Super Bowl. Hmm. And two won it. They're in good company right now. If you look at what they have in terms of balance, in terms of what they can do on the defensive side, and as soon as they get James Conner back and the all-pro center and Pouncey, you're going to see this offense flow like you saw it in weeks past. So I am not worried about the Steelers at all. I'm with you, Marcellus. I'm not worried about the Steelers team. Do they have some concerns right now? Yeah. Yes, but if you look at all other 31 other teams, Everyone has things that they're addressing right now in this very moment as they meet. But the Steelers team, they have something that a lot of teams don't have. They can rush the passer. They can defend. They can get the ball back to their offense. That can do something that the Baltimore Ravens struggle to do, which is throw the ball. Yes, they struggle rushing the ball. And they will improve. Mm -hmm. as, Mar as, as Marcel has just said, you're missing Mark. Pouncey, your center, all pro guy. You're missing James Conner, who is the head of that rushing attack. So it, when you get that back, you will shore that up. You will at least get better. But when you can throw the ball, 
And you, yes, have we had drops? Of course, they do need to get better. Eric Ebron is another name that comes to mind mm. when I watch those guys and mm. their drop season. But those guys also make plays, and they have the capability of coming back, overcoming adversity. Anytime you have an offense that has a defense in their back pocket like that, and mm. they can still move the ball down the field with the passing game, you have a chance. Ben Roethlisberger is playing the best football in, in arguably in his entire career, especially when we talk about protecting the football. So anytime you protect the football, you get turnovers and you can throw the ball in the air. You have a recipe for success. Here, here's the problem, though, G. I, I don't know if you're, 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 you're still living under the myth of Ben Roethlisberger as far as moving the ball down the field. Because the stats about Ben Roethlisberger moving the ball down the field, they don't really support that. Since week seven, three for 23 on big play passes. That's passes traveling 25 plus yards through the air. He was one for four on that pass Monday. Ben Roethlisberger, he only completes 13% of those passes. Aaron Rodgers, 48%. Mahomes, 45%. Russell Wilson, 35%. So when you're talking about moving the ball down the field in chunks, we don't really see that out of the Steelers. Why does that matter? Because as a defender in the National Football League, our defensive coordinators would always say this, make offenses methodically drive the ball down the field. Eventually, they will mess up. If you give them the big play, that's what they want. But if you make them have to work 12, 13, 14 play drives, all it takes, G, and you know this better than me, one holding penalty, one false start, one sack, one drop snap, one drop pass. The Steelers, until they can get that big play offense going, that's where I have my concerns because since Le'Veon Bell left, where do they rank rushing? 31st, 29th, 29th. Connor and Pouncey have missed the last two weeks, last two games, I get that. But it's not like they missed the whole season. The Steelers are still just a passing offense right now, and you're a passing offense that can't create the big play. I'm worried only as it contains, compares to rather Super Bowl contention. Like the Steelers started 11 and 0. When you go 11 and 0, I'm thinking, oh, y'all about to go to the chip AFC Championship game. But until this offense gets more explosive, that's why I have a few reservations and a few concerns. Well, yeah, they've lost their balance because of injury and because because of play calling for whatever reason last three games Ben Roethlisberger averaging 50 pass attempts in those three games that's just too much I mean especially at a tender age where Ben Roethlisberger finds himself you can't be out there throwing the ball out of balance to that degree so once you get Connor back you get Pouncey back and you just commit more to a balanced attack, then I think they'll be fine in terms of what they're doing. Don't forget, Ben is having a tremendous year. 27 touchdowns, only seven interceptions. So he's fifth in the NFL in terms of touchdown passes. This is a situation where the Steelers lead in takeaways. They lead in sacks. That means they're going to get to your quarterback. Points per game allowed. Point per game differential, which I love. And are tied for the lead in turnover differential. This is a team that can play complementary football. It just needs to get healthy and also commit back to what its DNA is. And that's why I love what Tomlin was saying. And in longer sound, you can hear him talking, almost implying this was a good loss. We've been seeing the Steelers leaking oil and the check engine light was on for a few weeks here. Let's go back to that Ravens game where Tomlin said, hey, y'all look junior varsity out there. We all saw the Dallas Cowboys game and that nail biter. And then we saw him lose yesterday to the Washington football team. Sometimes there is a good loss because for some reason as a collective, when you win, a lot of guys shut down in terms of learning experience, in terms of them learning from that moment. They're like, ah, we won. We get caught up in the outcome where the coach, Mike Tomlin, is caught up in the performance. He's like, look, you continue to play this way, it's going to come back to bite you. And it finally did. But let's just be real about it, guys. They've been leaking oil for a few weeks here. It was good for for them to get that message that no matter how good you are, how perfect your record is, you still got to go out there and take care of responsibilities. Look, so Acho, you talk about the need and the necessity for them to be able to have the explosive plays, but how do you counter that? When you don't have the explosive plays, you possess the ball. This team is third mm -hmm. in the NFL in time of possession. And with a defense like that, you keep them fresh, you possess the ball, you create this 
horizontal passing game, which is an extension of the running attack that you don't already have. And that's how you combat the lack of down the field explosive plays. And then you equate the drops that they've had, which have been down the field, which could uh, entertain some potential explosive opportunities. You possess the ball and defenses struggle. You wear them down. You keep them on the field. You have opportunities to sustain drives and put points on the board. So I get it. You do want explosive plays, but if you can average 32 minutes a game of holding on to the football, you your odds of winning go up in this league. That's all y'all got to say? Oh, all right. I thought Acho had one more lap into my bed. I got one more nugget for you. They had a three-game stretch, <laughs> oh, big dog. Of, Look co of course you do, Marcellus. Well, I'm a nerd. I'm sorry, man. Don't let none of this fool you. I'm a nerd. Big, <laughs> fat nerd.